that one. Rick would be able to do that. It's good. Well, what we've done is we've deployed a set of sensors to the Mount St. Helens volcano. And these sensors are very interesting. They have the ability to recognize different kinds of events, such as seismic events, earthquakes, that are basically indications that something is happening at the volcano. So it can detect the differences between snow falling off of a branch, an animal running by, wind, a thunderstorm, and the very subtle signatures of magma moving at depth, perhaps even kilometers beneath the surface of the Earth. The big advantage here is the ability to put a sophisticated volcano monitoring system with a two-way communication capability between the control center and the network that's sitting on the volcano, and with a space component that, is, uh, that can be triggered from the ground and can trigger uh, behavior change on the uh, network on the ground. To do all this in a span of a few hours, uh, uh, this is particularly exciting. Actually, as the helicopters were flying, you could already monitor and see it on our computers that the network is forming. We could uh, put the uh, sensors down and as they're put down, they immediately streaming data to the USGS database and already have all these capabilities that current volcano monitoring networks do not have. What we try to do this is to build a very gene generic sensor web uh, that combines space and ground that uh, will sort of form a blueprint that our colleagues in the U United States Geological Survey could use for future volcano hazard monitoring system. That the next time there is a crisis, they could use the knowledge that was acquired in this and the technology that was acquired, uh, developed in this project and uh, apply it uh, to future volcano crises.